First of all, we've been bringing you stories about people helping our birds, bees, and butterflies. The monarch population is in real trouble. Honeybees are disappearing, but not everyone agrees that human assistance will really help Mother Nature in the long run. Paula Tupman takes a look at that debate and what it means for all of us. I'm at the Edsel and Eleanor Ford Butterfly House in Gross Point Shores, and this butterfly house is open all season long, but this is a great time to come because I just want you to see what's going on here. You see these? I mean, they have butterflies of all kinds, but particularly these beautiful monarchs that we all know are threatened. The monarch's mystique is that it is the only butterfly that actually migrates like a bird, taking as many as five generations to complete its journey from North America to Mexico. Its only food as a caterpillar is milkweed. That's where the female lays her eggs. Take a look, see that? She tucks her butt, places it on the milkweed, and look at that, there's the egg. So you have one, two, three, four, five eggs in a matter of seconds. Because the monarch caterpillar is so food specific, the entire species is considered threatened because milkweed has a lot of enemies. Tractors, weed whips, lawnmowers, rabbits, deer. When we do roadside mowing, we cut down a lot of, uh, a lot of good habitat for common milkweed that monarchs could use. Which is why so-called citizen scientists have taken up the mantle to help monarchs and mother nature by giving the eggs and caterpillars safe haven in kitchens and other pest-proof habitats. In fact, naturalist and retired educator Dan Farmer says the more people who learn how to raise monarchs properly, the better. It's an important boost because a caterpillar in the wild faces many dangers, including parasites and some diseases. But there's another learned philosophy, and that is hands off artificially incubating Mother Nature's creations. Dr. Tom Raffle of Oakland University's Biological Studies Department believes there are simply better ways to help the monarch population. The most important thing we need to do is uh, restore uh, butterfly habitat all across the United States. In fact, he says there is evidence that captive raised monarchs and other butterflies don't do as well. There's some evidence that uh, at least some of the, the populations that have been captive reared for a long period of time may have actually had the, uh, the ability to effectively migrate bred out of them. Uh, I think that there's uh, there needs to be more work on that, but I think it's I think it's uh, it's something that's a possibility that needs to be considered. So this is Dr. Raffles backyard and you can see all this beautiful milkweed with these big fat seed pods. And for those of us who really care about monarchs, this is what we really like to see. But with these opposing views, how do we make a decision? We've got to really do our own deep diving, do our research and really think about this. But one thing that most experts I talk to agree on is if we are going to raise these caterpillars to butterfly hood, make sure we're doing the releases in the summer, not before the fall migration. Just simply protect the habitat and hopefully that won't necessarily disrupt their natural biophers as well as is it biorhythms, biorhythms and georhythms. I'm learning too, Sandra, I'm trying to get those, trying to get that right. Yeah. Yeah, we all are, you know, and there's a lot to consider here. So many factors. Thank you so much, Paula.